The Workos TS10 was a light designed with input and feedback from the forum members at Budget Light Forums and the Workos company. The idea ended up being an inexpensive triple emitter flashlight with auxiliary LEDs. As you can see here, mine has blue and I've got another one with orange. And the light's powered from a 14500 battery to maintain a slim profile and short overall length. Thanks to Workos for sending me the black one here. And then I picked up a, a Metal Arc Oxide MAO version that they did when it was available for a brief time earlier this year. If you're watching this review around November 11th, 2022, make sure to check out the description below for links where, to where you can pick up this light for around $20 or so off AliExpress's or off of Workos aliexpress store due to the 1111 singles day sales if you're watching after that or want something that'll ship a little faster i'll also have discount codes for amazon and other places in the description so you might as well check those out and save a little bit of money and while you're there make sure to give my social media pages a like and a follow if you haven't already those do help me let's talk about the packaging and the accessories here it's a, just an orange and white box very simple one end there is a letter or there's a sticker that tells you what the light spec is and other than that it's just generic it comes in a plastic um, shell there. You get a manual, which is decent. You get a little card explaining uh, some directions on using it first. Interestingly, this is a generic card. It shows USB charging. The light doesn't actually have onboard USB-C charging, but it does come with a, um, a piece of paper in there to mechanically lock it out. Accessories that it comes with are two extra O-rings and a lanyard. The light, the light does come with an optional 14500 battery for just a dollar or two more. Um, I would recommend everybody get that because this light only runs on a 14500 and that's pretty inexpensive. So let's talk about the construction and design here and I'm going to use both lights interchangeably here. I think the white maybe shows up a little bit better on camera, but the light's made from aluminum here and there is a brass version as well, maybe a titanium in the future. And it comes with a number of configurations. It comes in four main body colors. There is, there's black, red, silver, and green. And as I said, there's brass as well. And then there was this MAO version which uh, I don't believe they're going, they plan to make more of at the moment. There are two LED emitter choices, 4,000 and 6,000 Kelvin, and there's four auxiliary colors. I've got orange and blue here, and the others are a red and a green. Like I said, I have the black with the 4,000 Kelvin with blue ox emitters, then I have the MAO with orange emitters, and the uh, also the 4,000 Kelvin. Tint LEDs. The MAO finish here is something we've seen from a few other lights. I really like the look of it, but it's really not the most durable. You can see a few nicks and dings and stuff like that. And that's just from normal pocket use and around the clip area too, that gets beat up pretty easily too. The light here is actually pretty small at uh, two and six eighths inches long. I have triple A flashlights like the Raylite Pineapple Mini here that are considerably longer, although the diameter is different. On the tail end, you do have the uh, button here and it's the same gray metal button that's on all the models. And it's a pretty good button, not a ton of noise, um, but it's nice and tactile feedback here. I, I like it there. The tail here is glued to the body so you cannot remove it. I'm assuming they did that for reliability. If anybody knows with the Lumintop FW3A and other series of lights had some issues early on when the tails were loose with the switch spacing. Similar story, I'd imagine. The body section here is just concave. It's smooth, there's no grip here, but with a light this small, you don't really need it. It fits pretty nice in your hand. You can do cigar grips as well. No problems there. The head is minimally designed, just a few fins there for design reasons. You do have markings. I, I kind of think it's a little bit marking heavy. I wish it was a few, little bit less. You've got the battery symbol there, which is nice. You've got the brand and the model number. You've got the warning gets hot, which it really does. And then you've got your marks on the back there. There's no serial number on here, which is a little strange, but not a bad thing. Internally, you've got a spring on the tail end. As you can see there, threads are square cut and were nicely lubricated. And that is what the inside of the head looks like as well. You've got those programming pins in there, which are exposed and wonderful. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Retention is where I'm gonna deduct a few points for this light, mainly for the 
double direction pocket clip here. I'm a pocket clip fan. If I'm gonna carry an EDC light, it's pretty much gotta have a pocket clip. I'm not a lanyard guy. If you were a lanyard guy here, this is good. No problems there. First problem I have with pocket clip is it's not that deep a carry. This is a small light. I'd love to have a deep carry clip like is on this uh, old Olight S1 baton where it goes all the way up. So the light buries and basically disappears in your pocket. Um, but the, then the distance here between the uh, base of the clip and the bend, I guess I'd say, it just isn't quite enough to fit jean material in there, pants. I ha I've even tried dress slacks and it's just not enough to get in there. And the other problem is you've got a ramp here that doesn't meet the flashlight body. So when you're putting it in your pocket, you either get caught on the bottom of the ramp or you get stuck and not having it go up to the very top there. It's not a great clip. It's the same clip off the Sofren SC21, and I had similar complaints when I reviewed the pro version of that. Thankfully, there are a few alternatives that fit that the flashlight community has found. You've got the uh, clip from the Olight Baton 3 or the Illumintop EO5C that you can put on and make the light, make the light carry a little bit better but uh, neither of those clips are things you can just buy on the market. You've got to either have the light and switch them or, I don't know, find one elsewhere. So size and weight, I measured the length of the light at 71.3 millimeters, diameter at 21 millimeters at the head, weight with the included battery and clip at 1.79 ounces, and the light's IPX8 water rated. And here are a few photos next to other AA or 14500 style lights that I have. So let's talk about the LED and beam here. The uh, Workros TS10 is using three lattice power CSP LEDs as its primary LED. And like I said, they're real in 4000 and 5800 Kelvin variants. There's also three secondary LEDs that are around here and they're in available in various different colors. As you can see here, I've got the ice blue and the orange. There's also a red and a green. With my opal meter, I measured the primary LEDs at 4152 Kelvin and 96 CRI. The DUV here was good. It's ever so slightly orange, which I don't mind. It's better than green or other colors, in my opinion. And the beam profile here is good for an EDC. And I can just turn that on and turn it a little bit lower so you can see here. The hotspot is pretty good sized due to that optic that's in there. And, you know, at short distances, this is a nice amount of light. At longer distances, it's decent. Just what you're looking for in an EDC. Let's take a look at the Workos TS10. And this is the auxiliary mode here. And I'll show you the other light here in just a second. I'm gonna adjust the exposure. So this is the orange light, obviously, here. I've also got blue. And these are both on in the high mode. These are fairly bright. I won't be able to show you what they look like on camera, but you can almost navigate with the blue one in a very dark room with it. It's pretty bright. These do have the option to be turned down in the firmware. So this is the ramping interface of Andro firmware. You can see it's nice and smooth, pretty quick. I can double press to go to turbo easily. And turbo is goes reasonably far. These are about 1200 lumens or so on my lumen tube. And you can see they throw to the end of the neighbor's fence there, which is about 50, 75 yards, something like that. So for an EDC light, this thing is plenty. But you can already see the output has really stepped down. And I apologize for any wind noise here. We've got a big cold front coming in. It's the last days of fall. But you can see it's stepped down quite a bit. But even with the step down, it's reasonably bright. This is a, a CSP LED 90 CRI, about 40... 100 Kelvin or so. So what color there is left of the yard you can still tell. And I can obviously ramp down and you can see that you can see even at lower modes here it does pretty well. And back up to turbo. Alright that's the top of high. And there is turbo. So pretty decent out to the inch of the neighbor's fence. And it does get warm to the touch for sure especially if you adjusted the ceiling. Here is my other one and th the only difference here is I've flashed the firmware on this one to update the problems that I spoke about and I've got it on step mode instead of ramping so you can see it bounces up like that. Turbo is included in the steps here. The other thing that's interesting is that on this one low is lower than on the stock light. So for the fun of it here's both lights on in turbo. Nice beam profiles for an EDC. Nice color rendering, nice tint. All around a nice EDC light. 
in my opinion. I'll give an output chart here. I, I do, I did turn it on to stepped mode and step one, it's moonlight mode, so very, very dim. Step two, seven lumens. Step three, 52 lumens. Step four, 300 lumens. Step five is 1,070 lumens. And that 1,070 doesn't quite match with what I've got in my runtime graphs, but we'll see that here in a minute. For my heat and runtimes, I'm running the light with the default thermal configuration with the black light here. It is a stock light as I received it from Workos with the Workos battery. It was reported by others that the light's thermals were pretty accurate from the factory, not something you always see. And let's face it, most people probably won't reprogram the thermals, but if you do, you can sustain some longer outputs, for, or some higher outputs for longer, but just know this thing gets hot quickly. Turbo produced 1,250 peak lumens, but within about 45 seconds, it stepped down to around 150 because the heat. Heat peaked at about 42C with this run, which is warm, but not hot. I, like I said, I think it'd probably be worth raising that default ceiling. And I'll probably do that after my review here. Total runtime was two hours and five minutes with the default battery. The default battery that it came with was claimed 900 milliamp hours and I tested it with 836 milliamp hours on my Vapecell S4 Plus charger. I then did a runtime test comparing a Vapecell H10 that I had and it's a high drain battery and I saw very minor differences between the Vapecell and the Workos battery that it came with. Overall the, the Vapecell actually had about five minutes less runtime. So let's talk about the UI here. The light uses the Andrel 2 firmware and I won't go into great detail on that. We've seen Andrel before. If you don't have a chart that's like this, get one. You need it. But I'm guessing most of you guys have Andrel lights anyways. There is something to note here. Blacklight here is an original light from when it first came out earlier this summer. And there's a firmware version in here that is buggy. It's version 2222208 0614. And the problems that it had were the auxiliary LEDs here, they stay on when you turn the light on. And let me see if I can get this dim so you can kind of see that. That might be hard to see on camera, but you can see the blues on yet with the primary LEDs. That's not supposed to happen. But the bigger problem is that with the uh, when the light's off, your LEDs here don't have low voltage protection. So the light can drain itself of battery power, put the battery into a dangerous setting in just a matter of days. Now there's a couple ways you can mitigate that. You can turn the auxiliary LEDs to low power or off. This is in high power now. Or you can flash the firmware and I've got a separate video on that. Um, I did it with Android. And I did it with a little programmer. It was really a neat process and something um, I'll do with this black light here as soon as we're done filming. Now the good news is that bug's been fixed in recent lights. Lights that have been shipping in the last two months or so, including this MAO version, comes with fixed firmware. So it shouldn't be something you have to worry about unless you're buying old stock. And if you don't have the pogo pins or something like that and you have an old stock, let me know. We can probably work out a deal and I can program it for you and send it back to you or something like that if you're in the U.S. Something worth noting here, the light has no built-in recharging. To recharge it, you will need an external charger. I've reviewed several on here that would work well. My most recent reviews from Xstar or uh, Vapcell would be excellent chargers here. I like to charge my 14500s on the slow side just because they are a smaller, lower capacity battery. Conclusion. The Workos TS10 is a really nice small EDC light in my opinion. It's got a lot of the features that you typically have to step up for in price like auxiliary LEDs, the high CRI LEDs and a warmer tint, uh, triple emitter lights, and uh, it's got the enthusiast firmware that's easily modifiable due to those exposed programming pads. This is running an AT Tiny 1616 if my memory serves correct processor. And that sounds like that's gonna be a processor that's used in a lot of other lights in the future. And I hope they manufacturers stick with those three pogo pins that are exposed so they're easy to program for people who are wanting to modify or change things in Android as new versions come out, things like that. These are relatively easy to LED swaps on. This front bezel does unscrew and you can get access. There are a few Redditors that do this for people if you're interested and people put Nisha 519As in there, which I think would be awesome. Nothing wrong with these uh, LEDs that are in here now, but we all know the Nisha 51As are kind of the best emitter right now. As with most high, as with most triple emitter lights, high and turbo produce a lot of heat and they don't last very long. This isn't really surprising, but like most people, I wish it would last a little bit longer. The clip is a total disappointment. 
no way around that here. It's the big negative on this light. Like I said, there's a few other options. If you're a lanyard guy, that works too. But uh, the clip could be a make it or break it for you. For me, I've kind of learned to be okay with it. It's still not quite what I want. And I'll probably uh, stick an Olight clip on to one of these and see how I like that as well. I suspect they used a parts bin clip to save some money here, but I would have gladly paid a few more dollars to get a clip that specifically fit this light. And maybe that's something they'll come out with in the future, who knows. Overall, this is a good value light under normal prices, which are around $25 to $30 with the battery. If I get this video out soon enough, you'll be able to score it for less than $20 on Workos' AliExpress shop. I'll have any other coupons or deals that I have, I'll put in the description below. I know I'll have some with Amazon too, so make sure you check those out. And I'm sure all, some of you guys already have this light already, so if you do, let me know what you think of it in the comments below. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys watching these videos, liking, commenting, and spreading the word to your friends. If you guys aren't subscribed, it really does help. If you do subscribe, I know a high percentage of you that watch these videos aren't subscribed for some reason, so hit that subscribe button so you won't miss the next flashlight review coming soon. Thanks for watching.